black thing among the snow, crying weep, weep in notes of woe. Where are they father and mother, say? They are both gone up to the church to pray. Because I was happy among the heath and smiled among the winter snow, they clothed me in clothes of death and taught me to sing the notes of woe. And because I am happy and dance and sing, they think they have done me no injury, and they are gone to praise God and his priest and king, who make up a heaven of our misery. Today we are going to be discussing The Chimney Sweeper by William Blake using the tip fast method. So start off, what exactly is a chimney sweeper? Well, from the 1700s to 1800s, chimney sweepers were ch usually children that were forced to sweep and clean chimneys, and it was a terrible job. Uh, it was just gross, it was disgusting, it was hard labor, and it was really just horrible labor. So we'll start off with that. So to paraphrase this poem, uh, the speaker sees a child covered in soot laying alone in the snow. The child says that his parents have forced him to be a chimney sweeper and are praying in a nearby church. The kid goes on to describe about how he used to be happy and smiled and dancing, and now he's sung notes of woe, he wears clothes of death, and he's not a happy person anymore. He used to be, now this job of being a chimney sweeper has really changed his perspective on life. Alright, now we begin to analyze the poem. And right off the bat, we can see that the poem has three stanzas. The first stanza has a rhyme scheme of A, A, B, B. Alrighty, and the second stanza right here has a rhyme scheme of C, A, C, A. And lastly, the third stanza has a rhyme scheme of D, E, D, E. Alrighty, for the f let's start breaking down the first stanza. So, a little black thing among the snow. Right off the bat, we can see black and snow. That's contrast. It'd be very easy to spot a black thing in a blanket of white snow. So, crying weep weep in notes of woe. Weep weep. So we establish right now that there is a second speaker in the poem. There's another, there's dialogue coming from another character. Right here, snow and woe, that is a rhyme couplet. So now the main speaker says, where are thy mother and father, say? And the child replies, they're both gone up to the church to pray. Say and pray is yet again another rhyme couplet. And now we can see established that there are two speakers in the poem. Continuing with stanza one, the speaker addresses the child as a thing. So this is almost derogatory, a thing opposed to a child as a person. So maybe the speaker doesn't see the child as an actual person, maybe less than due to his labor as a chimney sweeper. Also, the main character says, say. Now, this could also be a sound impatience, an order, a demand, yet another verbal command that says impatience and disregard for the second character's or child's humanity and feelings. So the last line establishes that this is in fact a child who has parents who instead of looking after him are actually at the church praying so this could show that the parents put more importance into religion than their child alrighty for the second stanza because I was happy upon the heath happy upon the heath will underline and smiled among the winter snow so I believe that these two lines tie right in with the attitude of the poem at first the child is happy, carefree, and he really does enjoy life and he's looking forward to life, it's optimistic until his parents force him to become a chimney sweeper. Well, the last two lines of the stanza, they clothe me in the clothes of death. So the clothes of death, I believe, is a metaphor, such as a metaphor for the outfit that the child is forced to wear while chimney sweeping, maybe an outfit that is required for chimney sweepers. 
and taught me to sing the notes of woe. That's also a metaphor which I believe to be crying. Singing the notes of woe, sadness, woe, I think crying. So for the third stanza. And because I am happy and dance and sing, we'll underline happy, dance, and sing. These three I link with happiness and joy. Goes more to the attitude of the poem. They think they have done me no injury. They, just like in the second stanza, refers to the parents. And are gone to praise God and his priest and king who make up heaven of our misery. Once I read the last line of this poem, I look at heaven and misery, and these two are incredibly contrasting terms. When you think of heaven, you think peace, happiness, joy, love, and it's in the same sentence as misery. So these two are pretty much polar opposites and provide meaning for the story. So, we've circled God, priest, king, and they. Now what do these have in common, these terms? Well, I believe that they all linked to social institutions that the author could believe is restricting children or chimney sweepers or the society as a whole. So by social institutions, church, which you have God and the priest, you have the government, the king, and they, parents. So maybe the author, when he was writing this, put blame upon these social institutions that almost have slavery for the people, and in this case, the chimney sweeper. Now let's move into the overall attitude of the poem. So I believe that this poem actually has very contrasting attitude. There's quite descriptive sadness, such as, in the close of death, sing the notes of woe. This is sad, terrible, misery, not other one. And this just has an attitude of sadness in the poem. However, we have the child, who's the chimney sweeper, referring to being happy upon the heath and smiled among the winter snow and happy and dancing and singing. So this provides almost two perspectives on the chimney sweeper, the child's life. He has, he was happy when he was not a chimney sweeper and he describes how happy he was and how he was happy and smiled and danced and sung and now he's a chimney sweeper and he's crying He's dressed in horrible clothes, he's covered in soot, his parents have abandoned him for God, and the attitude just wavers back and forth between happiness, sadness, abandonment, and death. Since there are many shifts in the attitude of the poem, we should also look at the shifts of diction. For example, because, and, 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 and. So, there are many shifts in tone in this poem. It goes from the child being sad, to explaining how he was happy, and he smiled, and now he transitioned to being sad and miserable. And his parents who think he's happy because they think he's done no injury. And they've gone to praise God. However, the child is still stuck in the misery. So these key words, these transition words, really do play into the attitude of how it wavers back and forth. Now we can take another look at the title, The Chimney Sweeper. So after reading the poem, we'll go back to the title and take a look at it. So what does a chimney sweeper mean to us now? As we can see, chimney sweepers are children, and it's almost a draining theme now. Like, as the kid, the child, he was happy, he was carefree, he enjoyed life, and becoming a chimney sweeper really diminished all those values he had. So, the chimney sweeper title really has a meaning of depravement and loss, and it really just alters your thinking of the whole entire poem. This is a very, very diverse poem, but I solely believe that the theme of the poem has to do with blame on social institutions. What I mean by that is the government, the parents, and church, or God really doesn't condemn horrible labor to children. And for example, the chimney sweeper. I think the chimney sweeper is just a single example of how these social institutions allow 
practical slavery to be considered decent or morally right in this society. In the end, I believe that this poem, The Chimney Sweeper, focuses on how parents, God, and the government are not held accountable for causing such misery on an innocent child, how they're not brought into question and how they allow such terrible acts to take place. And I believe William Blake really does a great job of interpreting this message through poetry.